looks a little bit messy what I have here but I've got all the elements I need to mount uh, the camera so we have the Freefly Systems Movi Pro we've got a camera this is the Canon C300 I've got a lens a 15mm in this case I got my screwdrivers my allen keys don't need that I got all the wires and all the baggies that were in there. I got a battery for the camera, which is important because you need to mount uh, whatever you mount completely set up the way you want to set it up. Because if I'm balanced with the camera and then I add a battery, it'll be unbalanced. Right. So I bet this is for the plate and this is these are quick releases for the slider. So that one comes off like that. And I'm done. So this is going underneath the camera. So what do we have? That fits. So I can use two. That's good, but I need Allen keys for that in order to attach them properly. So I got Allen keys. A whole bunch of them. Okay, so basically we need to focus on the camera a little. First of all, what we're going to take off in this case is the Saguto because and I always struggle with the, there we go, with the SDI. There we go. Don't need that monster. Um, don't need that either. And I'm afraid that Once we get down to the bare bones, then all of a sudden there's not much left, which is good. Uh, I think, well, we need to put on the lens anyway. So you have to choose your 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 glass up front because if you don't keep the time short make it fast make it snappy and you take off the lens cap also because you don't want that okay but if I turn this like that, this I should be able to put on here, which would provide me with the, and so I can only take off these. So we just have this, it'll function admirably. That's okay because I have these and I'll take out my so that's one thing it's omnidirectional so it doesn't really matter which one is front? So I'm kind of hoping that we don't need any additional um, plates or anything like that. So
that should work. So now we go to the, the mean machine. And what I learned is that you have to be careful when loading it up. Eee, does that even fit? Let's take out the battery. That would be something if this wouldn't fit. I don't think that's gonna fit. Let's take that off. There we go. Now it's woefully unbalanced and oh, the battery isn't in. So let's put the battery back in. Well, that's not too bad. Now this, this twists into place. So when you turn it around, like that, it'll twist into this bit right here. So I can actually put it top down. I don't have to slide the camera in, which is a good thing because as I said, I think it's gonna be a very tight fit. Level this up. Okay, down. I can twist that. So this can still move. Obviously now because I put this on, it's off balance again. So and it now it Okay, so it's back heavy. The pan you can adjust by taking these off. And because it goes this way, I'll move it a little bit like that. Well, that is not too bad, actually. We're back with the Movi Pro. And um, joy of joys, uh, I did rig up the C300. And, well, it fits rigged and all with batteries and everything in the case. As you can see, that is our Canon C300, neatly packed. I'll take off the, the, uh, the top lid so you can see. There we go. And there you have it. All rigged up and all the places you can go. Well, there it is. Put it up on the, on my desk. Well, I balanced it out, but obviously it's not balanced now. And because we have to put on the lens. So I balanced the whole thing with, uh, with batteries and a lens. Because if you don't, this is what you get. Because with a lens, and without the lens cap. It's supposed to be balanced. So it, what does it do? 
balancing these things are always a bit of a pain. Because this one seems to be wanting to go that way all the time and not... So here it seems balanced, but here it doesn't. But it's close, it's very close. So we can turn it on. No. Oh, for fuck's sake. Really? Okay. So here's a valuable lesson. Don't leave the batteries. Don't pack the batteries. Don't pack it with the batteries attached. Charge your batteries. Take them off. If you leave them on, they'll run dry. So, uh, and then you end up, so especially when you, because it does fit with the camera into the case. Um, and if you go on the road and you're driving for maybe a long time, you have to wait, you can leave it in the case, you know, and then eventually you take it out and you find that your batteries are a little bit more uh, past than they should have been. So take them off, Put them where they belong and you're good to go. So uh, for me, um, I, I'm betting for a lot of people, it's still very uh, tricky to balance uh, these out. Uh, it looks good now, but if I just give it a little, it'll just go. And for me, it's just, I don't know how close uh, the millimeters or the macro millimeters are or whatever but if I turn it on oh it's on activate the motors then it's actually not that bad they're pretty much in the green and um, so I'm kind of happy with that and it just did a quite a test walking around with it and it's actually not too bad. So, what is it that I want to say about it? First, I just want to show the Mimic, which I left on all this time, which you shouldn't because it's a transmitter and it does use up a lot of juice. It was like maybe an hour and a half ago. It was around twice the charge, but that's okay. So, um, if you want to connect radiographically the Mimic to the, uh, to the, to the Movi, then um, you have to use the radio button, and I'll go to that. So you switch hands. You move, well, <laughs> that's red control. I mean, it's, it's uh, red enabled it's red enabled, so to speak. And uh, that's, I mean, if you have a red, it's perfect. You can control your machine from this. Uh, I don't have a red, so I don't. Uh, it would be nice to be able to turn that off because, you know, I don't need it. Um, so here's the radio. So there's bind. I was pushing bind a lot yesterday and um, it turns out you have to push bind or press bind on both of the both ends of the so here we go to uh, to the radio 2 and you see you can also hook up a gamepad I'll try that later but you know to control it and then you could do bind and there you have it you saw it move and so yeah, that's the cool bit. Oh, hang on. No, it's connected now, but tricky bit. Well, that's not tricky. Mustn't forget it says off at the moment. I don't know if you can see, but they're kill. And it, if you do kill, it kills the motors. 
and then that happens. So we go back, it balances out again, and then we hit Mimic, and there we are. And it's lying flat now, so it's doing actually exactly what it's supposed to be doing, because I pick it up, and it moves up, and it's looking at you, pretty much. Where is it? Right over there. And the sensitivity is just quite marvelous. And um, I don't have anything hooked up to it. I can actually hook up the iPhone to this using uh, the Joby connection. Can hook it up, can use the Wi Fi setting of the Canon and watch it through the browser because it creates its own Wi-Fi network, which is actually quite cool because it saves me uh, investing, which we'll do later anyway, but for now I can try it out and um, uh, without an external monitor. I also can mount um, the iPhone here with the same, it's the same principle. So this is the Mimic. There are, uh, there is a, a pilot system also, which has a joystick and much more control over the whole system. But, you know, for me, this comes with, <sighs> okay, don't shake it. The Mimic comes with the Movi Pro. So this is the whole system. It's a basic system. You have the two batteries with chargers, the whole rig, the, the stand, which is just glorious, and the Mimic. So you can expand on it as you like, as you go along. You can buy a monitor here, you can use the same monitor here. Um, there are you know, some extensions, but not that many. You can get like a classic bar on it, so you don't have the whole rig. Uh, I don't see a reason why you would want to do that. Maybe if you want to lessen the footprint a little, but it's not a small gimbal, I found. Now uh, let me turn that off. There we go. It's not a small package. It's actually quite a large package once you attach a camera to it. And what I noticed is that the back of the gimbal comes to you quite a bit, which means you, the distance that you have to hold it, and if you have a, a bigger belly than I do, then you have to hold it even further out. And uh, it gets heavy quickly. So, but you cannot get it to you. It's just beyond, and I got long arms. So people with shorter arms, they, they run, in, run out of space, so they have to stretch further quicker. So, and for me, it's, mm, that's why I focus more on using this because this I can use all day and then we get somebody else to carry it. It's just one of those things. So balancing is still a tricky thing uh, with the C300 as you can see it's all the way to the top of the rods. Uh, the red is a smaller package, it's less high. I think it's just about the same width, but it's less high. Uh, well, this got everything in it and the red doesn't. You have to probably, you have to attach stuff to it. But, um, but it's, it's less high. So for the Canon, it comes all the way up to, uh, uh, to almost the end of the, the rods. Um, you can, this is part of my Saguto rig, so I think you, you can take it off and it gets a little bit lower, but you don't gain that much. Uh, it works fine with auto autofocus. Uh, I just tried out a couple of shots and uh, it's just with the autofocus, it, it works beautifully. I can monitor on the iPhone. And uh, so it's a, it's a win-win. It's a, I think it's a great package. Uh, the only other comparison I have is with the Ronin. Uh, that is as difficult to, uh, or as difficult. It's not that. It's not. It's just time-consuming to to balance it out. 
it takes some time and uh, but once you got it I mean now it runs good uh, I softened the um, um, what you call it the tuning stiffness there we go tuning stiffness I lessened that so there's little less fewer tension on uh, the motors so one of the nicer things uh, or one of the uh, perks that exist and uh, I'll show you but I, I have to turn off the motors otherwise it goes berserk so it's the toad in a hole connection which is just a peg with a well a hole with a toad I don't know where a toad in a hole so this is uh, you can hang it underneath a uh, drone and it's actually quite heavy that's because of the camera but you can also you can also turn it over and then you can put it on top of the Tarek, the car or on the uh, uh, the drone uh, for top mounted shots which is cool because all the drones fly like that they shoot like that they shoot down and around but if you do a top mount on the drone you can shoot like that and when you fly underneath the bridge or you know you want to fly up the facade of a building um, then you can actually turn the camera like that and go up and it's just it gives you well twice as much flexibility in your shots than um, um, than with just a bottom camera like a DJI Inspire or something like a basic uh, drone without one of these and um, then there is uh, you can buy a, an attachment like that and you can put it on a tripod which means you can put this unit on a tripod and then combined with the Mimic you have a um, perfectly controlled uh, pen tilt <laughs> roll machine so you can except for uh, the, the, the tripod being uh, fixed you can do a nice pen fully controlled and if you put it on a dolly and you can move the dolly and you can control this as well so it only turns one way because otherwise you tend to yeah, not that way then. So it moves that way. And we go up like that. And then we carefully lock it into place, put the clamp on, activate the motors. The motor thinks it's the other way around. Uh, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Right. So the clamp stays in the back. Perfect. What else can I say? Oh, there's one thing left to do actually. Because there isn't a lot of, but there's some of it. And, and we have two. That's one. And we go to the other side. And there's a second. There we go. And voila, now it's fully operational. 
And having said that, say goodbye.